Hello, friends. So for the non-techie people out there, this week for the tech community is kind of like a series of Taylor Swift conferences where everyone is going crazy on latest releases from some of the world's biggest tech companies when it comes to generative AI technology. Now, if you haven't seen yesterday, OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT, had their spring update conference where they launched a vastly improved model, so they say, to ChatGPT and loads of really great capabilities for free users, which actually makes the paid plans not so enviable anymore. And free users are getting basically all of the great features, I say 95% of the great features that are available with ChatGPT. But what I want to talk about is what is the performance difference between new models and old models? So what you see on your screen here is the API playground on ChatGPT. So this is what a lot of developers use for those of you in the non kind of tech lingo. Anyone can use this. You can sign up to use the ChatGPT API and do loads of different things on here. So what I'm showing you on my screen is two things. So I have got the new model of GPT-4.0 versus GPT Turbo, which was the current best in class model until yesterday. And the reason why I'm sharing this is that I think one, the free version of ChatGPT right now, as I speak, is obviously the best model for people use to experiment with. So whether you're in the LD world or not, I would definitely recommend that you check this out and use this. Certainly potential use cases in being a great tutor and assistant and helping you to coach through skills in particular. But the point of this video is to kind of look at the incremental differences between the performance of the two models. And the way that I can do this is this comparison here. So new version of GPT, old version of GPT. Basically what you're seeing here is the system message is what I told the large language model they were act as. So they're a friendly assistant. They're going to help answer questions with credible and simple answers. The user input is me as a human asking a question. So just did a really simple one. My first question was explain a large language model to me as a non-technical person. So from the new version of GPT, we can see that we've got a little bit more of a succinct style, a bit more of a friendly style and much better structure than if we look on the right hand side here with old kind of GPT. And it does what I kind of call that oversharing piece, doesn't give a lot of structure. And I think that is quite interesting to see that just using a very natural language input, we're already seeing the slight differences here in terms of the outputs, which I quite like. And then the second test is I uploaded a image from a recent AI report. And I just said to each of the models, tell me what this image is showing. So we can compare the outputs here. Now, I didn't think there was a huge amount of difference here, but it was definitely some things that I enjoyed versus the other. So on the old GPT-4, what we can see is that you know, we've got the description to say where this slide is from, what is it showing? We have got all of the structure, which is very nice. And we've got a summary here as well. What I didn't like on this side here is the oversharing piece again. So reaffirming what these components mean, that might be great for some people, but I am not looking for that. What I liked on the new GPT-4 model is again, very succinct, very friendly. I like the structure here where it's saying, key areas where AI is not being included. It gave me the full list, not just a part of a list that was here. So a bit more detail, which was fantastic. And it really hit to the, the key core of that slide. And then what I really liked here is the kind of a summary, but really just some notes that I can consider and help me out with any kind of next piece of work that I'm trying to do. So again, I'm not using this from a content creation perspective, very much looking at this as a full partner. This is a very simple test, but gives you a glimpse into the little nuances and improvements between the two models. And of course, there'll be more experimentation. I'm very excited to try out more of the vision capabilities and audio capabilities or voice capabilities, I should say, via mobile and the Mac app. What the new releases also mean is that any of you who were not able to use my custom GPT for performance consulting in EMA can now use that for free. So anyone who wants to engage with that can, and I'll leave a link in the comments below. So look, a little bit different than the usual, but I hope that's helpful to understand 
the different performance improvements in terms of the technology that is available today. Any questions, drop them below and I will talk to you in the next one.